Well, the boss of BP believes $100 a barrel for oil is a real possibility and has warned that the current cost of fuel is proving to be expensive for large emerging economies. I caught up with Bob Dudley, BP's chief executive at the One World, Young World Summit at The Hague and I began by asking him whether fossil fuels would continue to be a big part of the world's energy landscape. I don't like the term fossil fuels because it's such a big spectrum from clean burning natural gas, to make sure it doesn't leak, and then there's oil and then there's coal over here. So the term fossil fuel, I think, simplifies something better, more than it should. So today, 80% of the world is, is still this basket of, of fuels. I think you have to separate out electric power with transportation fuels because electric power and electricity, I mean, that's where coal and natural gas should be the primary, and I hope natural gas the primary one. Transportation is different. A little bundle of dense hydrocarbon that's stable drives a lot of the transportation system. Combine that more efficiently with electrification of vehicles, I think that's the future. You're investing very heavily in electric car charging right now. Mm -hmm. When do you expect to see a return on that investment? Well, we just purchased the largest vehicle charging company in the UK. We'll put it on our forecourts and, and around the cities as well. I think it's going to be a combination of when the cars are coming to the market. There's still not that many electric vehicles. Um, and they'll probably be more, more in the city than, the, than the, the countryside itself with long distances. But their investments, it's like exploration or other things that we do. Uh, that's a risk. Can't say for sure. But we think as the uptake comes of people using the cars, combining it probably with our retail sites and selling other things like coffee and clothes, which is happening, I think it's all got to be part of a system of providing energy. Did you know that more people come into BP stations now and don't buy fuel than do because of the convenience, the shopping, the coffee? I mean, it's a, it'll be a different model going forward. Obviously, there's been a big drop in investment by the global oil industry since 2014. Does that mean that we're looking at a pinch point in the future where supply will necessarily not be able to meet demand? It could. I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I take a little comfort now because when the prices were very high, the cost of investment was very high. And what's happened is efficiency has been driven in, cost reductions everywhere in the energy chain. So you could do a lot more today uh, with a dollar of investment than... Uh, we certainly could five years ago. So, but at some point, demand continues to grow for all forms of energy. It could catch up, and I, it's not good for the world to have the kind of oil prices we have today. They're too high. They're too high. They're too high. Uh, I think there's a fair way, which is uh, a price of oil between 50 and 65, say today, that allows production con countries that produce to, to have a fair price and stable and consuming countries to purchase it. Well, where we are today, for example, it's the highest prices ever in the history of India because of not only oil plus the currency movements, this is not helpful to some consuming countries. Does that mean the world has to brace itself for $100 oil in the near future? It's possible, but I think equally we could see it drop down another $10 $15 a barrel depending on certain things that happened. I think if, uh, if exemptions were given on the sanctions, you could see an immediate drop in the price of oil. If they tighten up, you could see it go up. Venezuela is defying economic gravity. There's uncertainty there. And then in the U.S., this place called the Permian is uh, very bottlenecked up. And at some point, those pipelines next year will start flowing, and that'll bring more supplies to the market. And what about the relationship that Saudi Arabia has with the outside world? I mean, it seemed as though the kingdom was opening itself up. Mm -hmm. This row over uh, Khashoggi, the journalist, appears to be turning the international community against Saudi Arabia. Would you be concerned if Saudi Arabia started to retaliate against some of the noise that's coming their way by cutting production? I think, I mean, experience says that Saudi Arabia is, has been a very responsible country. It, it, that, um, I, I actually don't see them using energy as a weapon. I, I know they worry about having enough production for growing populations to make sure they don't get blamed for not having enough energy. So it doesn't feel in character for, for that. A lot of people are quite cynical about big business. So do you have mm. a challenge in convincing ordinary people that BP mm. is a, a willing partner, a good partner in this fight rather than an adversary? Well, I think I think big business has a really misfortunate reputation right now. I mean, big business is really collections of people who have assets and make investments. It is people who provide a lot of taxes into the system, provide a lot of pensions into the system. People forget that, I think. 
Um, and then, so what do we do? In the communities where we operate are all around the world, we're partners with the communities. It, it, we support all kinds of programs outside of what we do. Uh, education, health, sports, culture. Uh, I, think, I think people don't see that. Our employees know it and they love what we do. We'll keep doing that. But um, I just hope people don't vilify business because it's actually the engines of economies around the world. And uh, um, I, 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 think it's, I think it's wrong and misguided, although it's easy to paint and label. It's like fossil fuels. Fossil fuels is so complex. I think companies are very different. I'm very proud of what we do uh, with BP all around the world.